Hello, guys, and welcome to the Invent With Me podcast, where each week we guide aspiring inventors and product creators to turn their innovative ideas into reality, learn valuable tips, insights, and success stories from a couple guys roughing it in the field of inventing so that you yourself can make your mark in the world. We are your hosts. My name is Grant, inventor of Torque Strap, a revolutionary spring-loaded cargo strap, a strap so easy to use, you just pull. And I'm Marcus. I invented quick tie-down anchors. It's a very snazzy anchoring solution, tie-downs for docks, decks, trailers, and more, utilizing the gap between the boards. That it is. Excellent. Hey, guys, if it's your first time here with us, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the show on whatever platform you may be on, not for our sake, but for yours, because we are here to do some learning. Yep. Without further ado, episode 12, Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. Will Shark Tank turn your business upside down? Mm. We, we haven't talked much about Shark Tank. Do people ask you, uh, have you gone on Shark Tank? All the time. All the time, One right? of the first things my friends all said is when I told them, hey, I invented this thing in my garage. Oh, are you going to go on Shark Tank? You should go on Shark Tank. Yeah. I have an in on Shark Tank. And what's funny is I actually have um, two viable sources that would be able to help me get on Shark Tank if I wanted to. And I, I'm just, I'm not there. And, and I don't, you know, the, the, the first thing that you do is when you watch that, it's like they want to see that you have a patent and they want to see that you've had sales. Yeah. You know, I, I seem, it seems sales like sales definitely patent. Yeah. I feel like they're always like, oh, you got a patent. Oh, you're patent pending. I feel like they ask, but I don't yeah. feel like they're like Nazis about it. Yeah. But yeah, I get that all the time too. Like, oh, you're going to go on Shark Tank? They act like people act like that's the cost of entry into this field right like that's the uh the holy the, grail the holy grail yeah. the absolute benchmark and it's it's if you haven't gone on shark tank you're no one mm -hmm. and if you have you're someone yeah and i think that's really pretty silly to think that that's the only avenue to go into to bringing a product to market to making millions on a product well and the the, the truth is and when you start looking at the stats if you've done any research is very few of those products actually go much past the show. Um, I have two friends, uh, fellow inventors, who both have successful products. One, they both went on Shark Tank. One um, took a deal with, I think it was Lori. Uh, she, uh, Lori is is the uh, QVC, QVC, right? Lori Grenier. Yeah, yeah, I think she went with the with the, and it helped them. They they they're benefiting from that. And then there's my other buddy went on there and he did not take the deal, but at that moment, it helped him a lot with the initial sales because of just the exposure in general. Do you think he made like a ton of sales? No, I don't think he, he made a ton of sales. Even today, like his product is doing well, but it's not just, you know, he's not, he's not a multimillionaire and never has to work again. Like he, he, the, the one lesson I learned as almost a little mentoring thing from his you got to keep hustling. Yeah. You don't stop hustling. Yeah. Like it's very few and far between that you come up with an idea and boom, it's out the door and now you've got millions in your pocket. That's just, it just doesn't work that way. No, not really. And you know, one funny thing that I just learned about the show, the average viewership per episode is about four or 5 million. Mm. It's good viewership, but it's 2023, you know, right. we can get four and five million views on Instagram reels, yep. YouTube shorts, yeah. Facebook reels, obviously TikTok. That level of exposure is not so rare that it's like, well, even if you don't get a deal, you got that exposure and you skyrocketed. You know, some people have gone on that show and expected that while it was broadcasting, their phone's just going to be going crazy sure. with sales. And actually, they only sell one, two units, mm -hmm. you know, because their product wasn't in the right place. Uh, the show didn't go perfectly for them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's not the holy grail people think it is. No, I don't think so at all, actually. And if you go at the wrong time, it's it's, it's a very much a timing game. Mm -hmm. If you go prematurely, if you take a took a deal prematurely, but even just being there too soon could really screw you, your reality, and your perception of what your business is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I think a, a lot of people also have an expectation or a thought that you go on the show, they like what you've got, and, and let's say you do partner up, that it's like, oh, I'm hands off now, and I don't have to do anything. Oh. No, they, they absolutely, and you can see that in the show, that they 100% they expect you to be 
even more full blown than you were, even more of the business per- person you were. And I see that a lot of them, they're not fans of the inventor types who aren't also business types. They're right. like, we don't, we're not here to take it over and make you a ton of money. No. We're here, here to help facilitate or to help get you into certain things or help you with a certain manufacturing or, or whatever it may be. But, right. but by no means are you going to go on that show and just be like, pow, I'm done. No, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think I watched an interview with Mark Cuban yeah. and he's like, listen, it's a show first and it's business second. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how many people think that it's like winning a game show to get a deal. It's, mm-hmm. This is not a game show. Right. To, to the sharks, it's a deal. To the producers, it's... A show. a show. Yep. It's always going to be a show first, right. deal second. Right. But yeah, no, uh, you're totally right. Like people think that once you get on Shark Tank, you make a deal and they're going to figure out their priority is to make you a millionaire. Now it's like having a boss mm. and a boss's priority in life. It's never to make you rich. It's to make you work. Mm. If you get rich when that happens, you know, that's mm. your problem. You got to figure that out. But there are very few people in this world whose priority is to make you rich. Yeah. It's to make you work. And the sharks aren't going to be any different. Now, we live in L.A. as well. I can't walk to the donut store down the street without tripping over to potential investors. Right. And where there's less drama, less strings attached, and less pressure than TV Mm -hmm. is an investor. That might be a better place to get the money is, you know, private equity somewhere else. Yeah. So to think that uh, Mr. Wonderful is the only person who will give you a hundred grand. Right. He might be the worst person to give you a hundred grand. I I would think so. And and there's a a, a total separate set of pressures, which we just mentioned, behind the fact that it's all tied into a show and tied into celebrities and tied into, you know, and it's, if, if you as an inventor out there were given the opportunity to go on the show, I definitely don't want to dissuade you from thinking about or researching more into that. Just don't put any pressure on yourself that like I've got to somehow get myself on Shark Tank and I'm, I'm made. You just do your research and look behind the scenes and, and do Google searches. And so many of those products go nowhere and so many of the deals are bad. And a lot of the people who, who actually got deals end up being horrible business people and, and there's bad stories about yeah. the the dis- <laughs> you know and, and the, the the sharks are like, well, we made a mistake there. You know, you're not gonna they're not gonna win every single one either. No. Um, I think Mark was like, overall, I haven't made any money. Yeah. Uh, I maybe it was him. Regardless, it was something like, you think I've made a ton of good deals and, and I'm rich off these people. Not whatsoever. Yeah. No, so. they're they're figuring eighty percent of their deals are gonna be bad. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I've heard that and I, I can believe it. The yeah. the business that they're in, it's a quantity, it's a trading game. Sure. So they could you know, a hundred thousand dollars is nothing to these sharks mm. uh, for most of them. So for them to throw a hundred grand at five businesses in one season, yeah, they're counting on one to hit. Well, and you forget they also get paid for the show itself and and that whole thing. They get so to promote their own they get products. To promote their own brands, their own products, yeah. their own lifestyle. So yeah, there's a lot more than just them giving you a bit of cash. Yeah. 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 So to think that it's the end all be all, it's 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 really it's if you're going into this venture, okay, so I'll go I'll go into my story with mm-hmm. Shark Tank. Year one, I thought, I have a cool invention idea, so I'll apply for Shark Tank. Uh, Nothing happened that year. The next year, they found me because I started going viral on Mm. social media. And a producer found me, said, hey, we want you to apply for Shark Tank. And then I was like, holy crap. They came to me. This is definitely going to happen. And they asked me to send them a 10-minute application video, which I did a pretty good job on. And um, I thought I have it in the bank. And basically what I got back from them about a week later was maybe this time next year. Mm -hmm. Like I think they thought that maybe the business just wasn't quite refined enough or my pitch wasn't Mm -hmm. refined enough. That's my guess. Well, that time next year came up and guess what? I no longer wanted to be on Shark Tank. Sure. Things were starting to happen. People had legitimately offered to buy 20% of my company, Mm -hmm. and my firm position at that point was no thank you. Because I've been working for people my whole life. I don't want to do it again. You know, that's that's really what this is going to turn into if you take a deal. And Shark Tank, the producers, they're very strict. They want to know, you're not just coming on here to, to... 
you know, spin around in a hula hoop and say, hey, I was on TV. Right. We want to know that, like, they take down your business information. Oh, yeah. They make they make sure they know who has a stake in your company already. Mm-hmm. Are, all, are, are all parties present for mm-hmm. this deal? They have to be sure. on the show. Sure. And then they're going to be, once, you, once you're in, you're not even in, in. You go to L.A., they'll put you in a, up in a hotel, and they're going to refine your pitch. They're mm. going to get you camera ready, TV ready. It's a TV show first. Of course it is. There's going to be some drama, whether there is or isn't. <laughs> I mean, you don't ever go on there and be like, here, here's my thing. And they're like, yeah, we love it. And here's some money. You're like, yeah. No, you there's going to be the suspenseful, yeah. and the zooms in on the faces. Yeah. Dun, and the, dun, dun. They're going to catch your hands shaking and the yeah. sweat coming down. Yeah, your, I, yeah it's, it's a TV show first. A lot of people's pitches don't make the final cut. Yeah. They probably cut a solid 30% of the pitches because dude or the chick was just a dud on camera. Sure. So... Again, if you're looking for money for your business, my God, that is a lot of time and a yep. lot of stress yep. spent in the wrong direction. You're pretty much going to be a busy idiot because you're going to be busy doing all the wrong things when what you should be doing is going after more t- traditional capital. Fools, friends, and f- what's the other one? They say when you need money. <laughs> well, I got the fool part right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> they say when you need money, you go after friends, fools, and family. Oh, okay. Okay, that's where you start when, right, you, okay. when you're going after money. You yeah. don't start with Shark Tank. Yeah. Well, and on that same note, and talking about Shark Tank, we should throw in there, uh, you've got your Kickstarter and Indiegogo, those type of platforms as well, which is obviously not a TV show, but uh, is it worth putting your product uh, or trying to get capital on a Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And and we both have a bit of experience with those. I had a different invention, um, which was pretty specific. It was a, a fishing buckle, like for a fisherman. And I just, I was fresh off the boat. Um, I had the, the idea panned out and all that good stuff. I just, I had a campaign. I didn't push it nearly as hard as I could have, and it wasn't the right market. Right. So what I did from that is I didn't get funded, but I learned a ton. Yeah. And um, I will come back to that invention, but first it's quick tie down anchors. But you actually funded your product, right? My first one, yeah. I funded. My second one, I was pretty cocky and I missed yeah. the mark. Yeah. I I anchored pretty high. So my first one, I was asking for maybe $8,000. Okay. Six, was that a reasonable number? Or was that just like, oh, I just need $8,000. I mean, did you research that 8,000 will get me started? 8,000 was going to be enough to get the first order as well as get some lawyer fees going. Okay. So I think 8,000, uh, let's call it seven. Okay. I, I think it was six to eight. Seven grand was enough to get me to that next level. Okay. When you get on Kickstarter, if you if you think I'm going to get on Kickstarter, ask for a hundred grand and work my butt off to get that hundred grand, and then I'm going to have my salary for a year and I can quit my job, it's it's going to show. And that's not really how Kickstarter yeah. works. You have to be pretty dang modest and pretty realistic. Yeah. And Kickstarter is going to ask you to lay out a budget. You don't have to do it, but it helps your contributors know or your pledges know where the money's going. Yeah. And so I had to be transparent. I'm like, well, my thir- first order is going to cost thirty five hundred. I'm going to spend probably a thousand bucks on artwork, another thousand bucks on language and another two grand on lawyer fees. And and that's it. So you, I'm not getting rich off this seven mm-hmm. grand. I'm not right. going to go put it on red in Vegas. This is just what I need pretty much for this half of the year mm-hmm. to get things going. Mm-hmm. And if that's how you approach it, you have a pretty good chance. Oh, you just get bombarded with people wanting to advertise your Kickstarter too, you don't do. you? It's it's almost it's like a garage sale. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's it, it it now in life it's not worth a garage sale because people want to come and nickel and dime you for like how much is that you know DVD from 1980? I'll give you fifty cents for it. You're like I don't just take it, just take it away. But, but everything for twenty bucks. It is. It's you almost get more emails and more inundated with people who want to maximize or help you make videos or we'll get your Kickstarter out there or whatever. Yeah, we're going to yeah. promote your Kickstarter in magazines and newspapers. Yeah. And we we get over 10 million eyeballs a month on our uh, on our uh, blog, just crappy marketing. Yeah. And I freaking fell for one, dude. <laughs> you did too, didn't you? Uh, no, not on, not on that. I'm, I'm sure I've fallen for some stuff and I'm, I'm <sighs> happy to share that, but I, I don't know which one you're talking about. Uh, I was like the 15th 
publication that was like, hey, we noticed you're not getting funded. Unfortunately, oh, you're, a, yes, for the Kickstarter okay, to about. try to get your Kickstarter funded. I know yeah. you have a story, but yeah. wait your turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see who lost more money. Yeah. I, so it was like the 10th publication yeah. to email me and be like, well, we're going to, we, we want to help you get funded because 90% of these fail because this and that. So if you give us X amount of dollars. So anyway, they send you a tier of packages and all these packages include what you can reach as an audience and where. And I took the pretty low tier package for like 750 bucks. They were guaranteeing you'll get X amount of eyeball readers from our tech and gadget magazine. You'll get X amount of views from our push on our social media pages. It's all crap. Yes, they technically do what they say, but it's crap. No one's reading these pay-to-play yeah. tech magazines. Yeah. It, it's not genuine news. It's not true virality. It's just paying for views and readership and it, it, it doesn't convert. I maybe made 50 bucks off the $750 I spent. Right. So that's something to look out for. So mine mine was, uh, now I remember, it was outside of Kickstarter, but it was a marketing, it was a marketing company and, or a PR firm. And I think it was 5,000 bucks. And we'll get you in this magazine, that magazine, we'll get you in this newsletter. We'll, we, they got me interviewed on some thing and it didn't lead to anything anything <laughs> and and here's so that's five thousand dollars i don't think i was asking for too much more than five thousand no maybe i was asking for I, I forget what i was asking but let's say it's 15 grand or something uh, right? you, i'm sorry your kickstarter my kickstarter request? yeah okay yeah and so i had already i mean that's five thousand i'm like i could have self-funded this whole project <laughs> with what i just spent but you have you know you just you don't know you don't know and so i spent the five thousand dollars yes they got me in some stuff and yes the, but it was nothing and in hindsight it's so funny because it was kind of the beginning of social media people becoming influencers and things like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to sit down and look. And I hadn't even known to do that. And there was a phishing website. It was, or sorry, not a website, uh, uh, an account. And they had over a million views. Followers? Uh, over a million followers. Yeah. Sorry, over a million followers. And it was $100 for one 24-hour post. So he ran your post for 24 hours. And I gave him a snazzy little graphic or whatever it was, a little thing. And that one hundred dollars were was the best money I could have spent. It got me another like hundred views or follower, whatever it was at the time, all because of a twenty four hour one hundred dollar post. And I I think back and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> you know, it really it really opened my mind to to like don't don't let all these people come out of the woodwork and we and we'll get you this and we'll get you that. There are so many, we, we, you and I have been big advocates of, of definitely now the free method of just pushing yourself on your, your Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube and stuff like that. And it goes, you know, find yourself somebody who's aligned with your product, do a little paid post or whatever, and you'll be far better off than trying to get in whatever Fisher magazine yeah. somewhere buried in some page that nobody cares about and does, maybe, maybe doesn't read. Yeah. It yeah. is such a slim chance. It goes along with what we've talked about a lot in different podcasts. In this space, there's a lot of people very ready and well aligned to take your money. Yes. The the real money in inventing is screwing inventors. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> but if you're savvy and if you listen to this podcast, you'll learn the tips and tricks to avoid getting screwed all these ways like we did. You know, our, yeah. our tagline is we took the hit so that you don't have to yep. and it's very, very true because if I could go talk to my younger self, oh. I would do this so much better. Yeah, I have a, a neighbor buddy who's got invention ideas out the wazoo, and I'm like, okay, you put in ten grand, I'll put in ten grand, and we'll get this all done for twenty thousand dollars. It'll take us two years, but we'll be profitable. Mm -hmm. We'll do everything we can ourselves. I know how to do the artwork. I know how to do the design. I know who to hire for the patent. I know mm -hmm. how long to push provisional patent for just the right amount of money. Yeah, that's the kind of value that comes from you and I losing that money. Sure. And if you hadn't lost those thousands of dollars, if I hadn't done the same, I never would have learned the way I learn now. Yeah, and it's it's unfortunate that you do, but I mean that's the process in any of this stuff. And I think about what five thousand bucks right now in my pocket would do 
man, the amount of, of, of self found advertising and uh, a few little paid posts and maybe some targeted ads here and there, some good sure. ones. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That could, that'd make a huge yeah. difference. So yeah. getting back to shark tanks, yeah. uh, the thumbnail of this video is, you know, is, is, sh could shark tank turn your business upside down? Let's talk about how it could go really wrong. Mm -hmm. If you go into shark tank too early and you're driving all this traffic to your website and you didn't listen to our earlier podcast and you didn't go with Shopify or Wix or you just mm -hmm. you had a you pulled in a favor, please don't pull in favors. Mm -hmm. Free stuff is crappy stuff. You pulled in a favor from a buddy who used to make websites back in on, you know, Bitwise 1998. And he makes you a website for your product. You get 100 people on your website and your website crashes because it couldn't handle the traffic. That's one example of it's way too early. Mm -hmm. Or you just, your inventory's too low. You, you have a great product, but you only have a 1,000 pieces. Uh, selling out sucks. Yeah. You can't sell out. That was my biggest fear uh, in the beginning too. And it's it's like you, you think the best case and the worst case scenario can be that same exact thought, right? Best case scenario is I sell everything I just have. And the worst case scenario is I sell everything I have. And it takes another three months to get more in. And in that time, yeah. you know, you lose your momentum and all that. But I mean, you brought up a good point with... Um, with how could Shark Tank go? You got to make sure you can also supply those needs and maybe the show and your episode is banging and maybe you're going to get so many people who just want to come and buy your product. But if you don't have it or you don't have the ability to have it manufactured within a, a realistic time frame, then that's all for, for nil. Yeah. And even you now, I think you're, you know, the questions that big people are asking in some of these big box stores are asking you are, hey, we're talking about this number do you have the ability to to do that? Mm -hmm. And yeah, the answer better be yes, right? Or, or you know, they don't have two seconds for you if you don't have the ability to to give them what they need. Definitely, yeah. And the other thing that the sharks are going to come at you with is all these questions. And yes, you can watch every episode. You can write down every single question that will come at you, but you can't prepare for what happens after that show when. They're looking at you with their hands out and mm -hmm. saying, okay, so you have, you already have two manufacturers. Call them up. I want the product in 45 days. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, well, here's the thing. And then you start getting into the gritty details. Right. My manufacturer screwed up my last three shipments. So we need to find a new manufacturer and this and that and this and right. that and all these little caveats that you haven't ironed out yet. Now you have a boss looking at you who's upset with your performance. Right. And you owe them a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or you're still at they're about to hand you a check for a hundred grand right. and you say, Well, actually my last manufacturer sent me a circle when I asked for a square. Mm. So those types of things will come up. That that's a good that's I mean, that's a good point just to say, hey, if if you do decide to go on any of these platforms uh, for any of that stuff is just be super honest with yourself more than anything, but also with your audience because that'll come and bite you. And even if it, if you're nervous and you just want that sale or you want to be on TV or you want to do these things, then it's it's not worth it. It's not worth it unless you're super dialed in. You can you can bring the back end to, to whatever happens when the time's right. And like you said, I do have two manufacturers, but, but, yeah, that, that's going to get you in trouble every time. Yeah. yeah. I watched them. I was, we had to do our research for the podcast, obviously, and I got mm -hmm. stuck on some story. Uh, Dame and John mm -hmm. took a deal with a barbecue sauce company mm -hmm. or some kind of type of barbecue company. It was a mom and, or a dad daughter type of operation. And oh my gosh, the mm -hmm. lawsuits that, that they are both facing now, they're both suing and counter suing Ugh. one another because the deal just went so bad. The, uh, what's it called? The person who received the money, mm -hmm. uh, he was super upset with what he was getting. He had basically been doing a deal with Damon John from his point of view for several years now, mm -hmm. and he's not making enough money to pay the bills. Right. So he's painting Damon John out to be a bad guy. And right. da Damon John's saying, no, no, no. He was supposed to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Everybody's got their own story, right? Of course. And so they're just dragging each other through the mud. And you don't know who's right and who's wrong. All you know is this looks like a lot of freaking work. And I, bet you, I bet you Damon's uh, lawyers are probably better. <laughs> yeah, I bet they're better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I bet that the bills are racking up. Yeah. And this just looks like a lot of work to go through to sell some freaking barbecue sauce. Yeah. So look, it's it's TV. It looks yeah. beautiful, it looks glamorous, yeah. but it's not ponies and rainbows. It right. is it is RL, man, real life. Let's talk about for a minute though. Low key, it would be awesome to go on Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a middle finger to my friends back home to be like, hey, do you have cable television? Right. Tune in on Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, like, we're not here to just diss the show. No, not at all. If you're in the right position, sure. Dude, that'd be so cool. Well, and I started the show out by saying I had two friends who went on it and they both benefited from it. One with a deal, one without a deal, but with exposure. And and it was great. So not dissuading you, just want to, to bring you you to the reality of it's not walk on the show, something happens, it's all toasty toasty. Yeah. It's even more work after that. It's being under the scrutiny of somebody, like yeah. you said, a kind of a boss, even if it's just a, a 10% partner, 20% yeah. partner. And um, yeah, it's just to have your stuff together because it'll get sussed out so quick if not. Dude, when I sent in the application video, like my wife watched it and we were like, I'm going to get on the show. Yeah. I have a product. I have sales. Uh, people like it. I have testimonials. I'm charming. I'm charming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was articulate. I had professional audio equipment <laughs> yeah. in my video. I'm like, I'm getting on the show. Yeah. And then I got real nervous because yeah. I'm like, I'm going to be the guy on there whose hands are so shaky he can't thread the the hook of right. the strap onto my thing that I'm building. And I'm the guy with such high anxiety that the months building up to it, when I'm building my props and my demos and everything, I'm going to just be a terrible dad to be around. I'm going to be so stressed <laughs> out. Like, that's a high level of pressure and work and engagement to mm -hmm. get to the show ready. And then they might not even air your stuff. They might not. Oh, that would suck. Yeah. But I was seriously, like, I was pretty convinced I'd get on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, honestly, I'm shocked that I wasn't, but, you know, all for the better, I don't have a boss. Right. I still own 100% of my company. You yep. do too. And if I don't want to work today, I don't work today. Right. I don't have anybody breathing. If I want to do this next week, I do it next week. Yeah. That's invaluable. Yeah. So, you know, the goal of Shark Tank, obviously, at the end of the day, is to get money and get exposure. Yep. It, Marcus, if you needed a hundred grand in exposure, how would you go about it besides Shark Tank? Well, I tell you now, the exposure part is is one hundred percent now is social media. I think Shark Tank was probably a really good way to get that exposure years ago when it started, and now it's the it's the Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and like you said it yourself, you can get ten million views off a good thing. That's that's far more than you're going to see on one episode of one week of something like Shark Tank. Yeah. The the money, um, you, you know, I saved up. I did it differently. So I saved up before I came out with my invention. But if you are, you know, there's some some great credit card. We talk, I think we're going to talk about that in another one. Yeah. It's credit card hacking Yeah. And, and banks and things like that. I mean, I know that's you don't want to be silly and you don't want to be stupid. But if you're smart and you do it right, then there's a lot of money to be had there in in smaller amounts and even a larger amounts when it comes to that yeah um but how about you uh same same exact for both yeah. ways and and one thing i want to say there's there's always a way to get money with credit card hacking and whatever whatever yes exposure as you just said i'm not going to be redundant but mm. one note is imagine getting the money you have to have a plan to spend it mm -hmm. and quick. So I want to tell a quick story. I went to North Carolina to meet with some potential investors and they wanted, because of the valuation of my company, they wanted to give me $300,000 uh, to get a, a decent sized portion of the company. Mm -hmm. And what it came down to, the reason I said no was I'm not ready for $300,000. Mm -hmm. So what I said to them was, listen, guys, if you give me 300 grand, I can't spend it for at least eight months because I'm not comfortable enough with a manufacturer. What good is ordering 300 grand worth of stuff if it's all crap? Mm -hmm. So I said, I can't take this deal because I can't spend this money right now. I don't mm -hmm. need the money for eight months. 
So I'm not going to take the deal and sit on it and now for eight months think, gosh, should I really have taken this money? Now they have 20% and I'm stuck with it and I got to figure out how to make them happy and everything for the mm -hmm. rest of my life. It's a marriage, man. You mm -hmm. got to legally get out of that. You got to mm -hmm. buy your way out of it. So if you're not in a position to, to it, it's almost like a plug and play. If you can't grab that money and plug it in and turn it into more money mm -hmm. in a short amount of time, you're not ready for the money. Right. And I, I definitely have been not ready for the money in a lot of a lot of different times. We just went to China and we now we have a manufacturer we're pretty comfortable with. Still not there yet, mm -hmm. but barring any unforeseen issues with this next shipment, once that's approved, yes, I'm ready for a hundred thousand dollars and mm -hmm. I'm gonna squeeze every credit card I have. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull from the personal savings from me and my wife. Uh, obviously, obviously, a lot of business exp uh, account funds that we have it's all going to get dumped into that and we're going to have to you know do the rice and beans for a couple months till the inventory gets here and mm -hmm. we can start selling it but those are the big tear up things you have to do with capital to get to the next well level. and that's that's a good uh, a good point too is th those are the times to get those capital you're not going to credit a card hack for dilly dally money to do silly things with because you're gonna you're gonna have to pay it back at some point right yeah and it's you're gonna hit those things but if hey i know these are already sold these pieces, right? I know that I just need money to get that next shipment. And then right. it's, those are the times to start pulling from those weird places that you normally potentially wouldn't. But I think we save that one for that. That's a whole episode is talking about money and, and funding and whether you take it or not and partnerships and whether you take them or not financing, uh, financing and yeah. stuff like that. So that's another one. Excellent. Yeah. I love it. Well, then let's wrap it up. Sure. Hey, without further ado, guys, this has been the episode on shark tank. Will it turn your business upside down? You know, you got to look at every aspect and every detail of these deals because this is your baby and you got to have to ask yourself, do I really want a boss in this situation? Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe on whatever platform you may be on. Remember, Marcus and I took the punches so that you don't have to. So take advantage of that and we'll see you on the next one.